Hello and welcome to The Tech Show. Coming up this week, we look at those hunt wheels that are made from recycled aluminium. Uh, Bluegrass have released a shed ton of new pads. And more brands are selling direct, but is this gonna save or kill the industry? So in the news today, uh, Kona actually have been bought out, saved, by the original founders and they've sort of put some shade on that buy one get one free offer that they <laughs> I saw did. That. <laughs> Um, and they were also promised to strengthen bike shop relationships by putting a pause on direct sales, which is quite interesting. Um, meanwhile, boutique shop brand Yeti are actually starting to sell direct. Um, they're keeping it boutique, though. Uh, it's only US only at the moment. But what they're doing is they're providing bikes, well, certain models anyway, that are ready to ride. So they're putting sealant in, they're setting up your suspension, they're even bedding in the brakes now. I actually think that's really interesting. I've never heard of that before. <laughs> they're doing a local a lap down local bike park. Yeah, maybe. Turns up uh, <laughs> dusty. Obviously you can bed them in along the street, but also mm. the suspension. I mean, I've had direct uh, brands where the, the frame comes and the shock is great, but it's a million miles away, the base yeah. settings. That's the first thing I do is look in the, you know, the manual and get it. And you could easily jump on a bike and think, oh, this is rubbish if yeah. it's nowhere near. So. It's a good move, I think. Mm, interesting. Um, but there is brands going in different directions. Some are going towards direct sailing, like Yeti, and some are moving more towards bike shops. In the news as well, Whitey have just opened one of their big concept stores in Bentonville, mm. so obviously Northwest Arkansas, a big hub for US riders. But people like Canyon have the tour as well, the collective sessions where they take up loads of bikes. That was massive the other week. Mm. Or even the UK, Propane, based in the southeast UK, kind of a, a big uh, mountain bike hub down there where people can go and look at the bikes and buy one, try one and buy one, hopefully. Yeah, that's true. And people like Giant and Trek and Specialized, they've been doing this sort of model for years where they've combined direct selling online, but also having a big concept store where you can, well, you can buy online, but you can actually check that it's in stock on in store and go and have a look at it and physically look at it and you know, speak to someone as well. So it's they've the, combined it. It's the modern way of doing things, isn't it? Obviously, if I want to buy a motorbike or a car, oh, you look true, online yeah. and you, you don't necessarily buy it online, but if you can, you know, most people, I would say, are tempted to do it, I guess. Yeah, but the amount of tools I've bought from Screwfix to check if it's in store so I can go and physically pick it up I that day, that. you could do that. Particularly <laughs> a shop like Screwfix where there's a thousand things. Yeah. You pretty much know it's going to be there. Yeah. <laughs> so what's the pros and cons of this? Is selling direct actually going to save the industry or kill it because we're moving away from bike shops I mean there's obviously some of the pros is saving some money on overheads of stores yeah, um, and that's a pro for customers as well because often the savings can be passed on um, as we know you know people like YT Canyon propane they've usually been able to pass on those savings to customers and they can be quite a bargain can't they yeah, but it's maybe not com completely split the market like you, maybe you would have thought to begin with. People still buy the other bikes. Mm. They, they haven't all migrated to these bikes. So I, I don't know. I true. think yeah, there true. are cons. I think I think there's some assumed knowledge. You've got to know what you're after mm. to just buy it without without you know comparing loads of different brands, I suppose. And also there's some assumed knowledge because you're probably going to have to set this yeah. bike up yourself, which means doing some things that not everyone's comfortable with maybe yeah and if a build because you obviously have to build it up and if you if anything goes wrong you can't just take it back to them and say what's happened here whereas with a bike shop it, they will build it up for you or if anything goes wrong usually you can go back uh, free of charge and get it fixed yeah. and some shops will even offer a four-week tune-up so exactly, if your yeah. gears go slack and you want those tuned up it's done for you so you don't need to have the knowledge um, and also you know having the choice of brands when maybe you don't know what you want like you said there is some assumed knowledge so yeah if you went into a bike shop you can ask an expert you can look at loads of brands all at once and physically touch and test and sit on them for sizing as well. Um, so I can see why people want to save bike shops. I definitely, there's, you know, in my experience, there's a whole community around our local bike shop. And mm -hmm. I, I know they could be maybe a little bit intimidating, like you think of a used car salesman, but to me, it doesn't feel like that. They want to, they want to get a customer <laughs> to come back when they want their bike service. So you, sure. there aren't many shops going around selling you the cheapest thing they can get rid of the quickest. It's they want to give you advice, help you out, 
and bring you into the fold as part of the community as well, I think. Yeah, although I have heard some bad stories from bike shops and brands don't get to control how the staff react to people coming in. They can't control the message about the brand or even the knowledge that they have about that particular bike. Whereas if you shop direct, all of that, warranties, questions, yeah. you know, any brand information or help um, is very specialised to that brand. Um, so obviously there's a lot of pros and cons, but I'm interested to know what the viewers think. Um, do you think selling direct more is going to actually save the industry because it's struggling at the moment? Or do you think it's going to kill it by killing off too many bike shops? Let me know down in the comments below. Hey, and where will you buy your bike next? Mm, will good you question. go online or to a shop? So Hunt have released three new sets of wheels under the bracket phase one, and this is all about sustainability and practicing uh, some things like less resource intensive manufacturing processes. Uh, they're leveraging recycled materials. Uh, they say they'll be using sustainability focused um, choices with shorter transport distances and reducing their environmental impact from start to finish. And this includes a set of trail mountain biking wheels and the rims will be 75% recycled aluminium. Um, and this will come with a zero coat ethos, which effectively means that the spokes and the nipples aren't coated. So they're hand building these wheels with J-Bend spokes. Now, obviously J-Bend is known for being pretty durable and easy to replace. So this goes along with their ethos of keeping wheels running for longer and keeping them um, maintained and sustainable. But also they've opted to save the energy and the chemicals um, from the anodizing process. So they forego this and they're using raw brass spoke nipples as well, because to be honest, brass is naturally corrosion resistant. They don't actually need to be colored. So they're just getting rid of all of that section. The trail wheels are 29er alloy wheels, 30 mil internal rim width, optimized for 2.2 up to 2.6 trail tires. Pretty calm, I suppose, though, all mm. that. Hunt Europa Boost Hub is CNC machined and assembled in France, offering a seven and a half degree uh, engagement angle. Weight is 1,878 uh, grams per pair. And pricing is 489 pounds, 549 euros, and 589 dollars. They're also continuing to reduce their company-wide carbon footprint. They continue their Renew project where they're selling lightly used products or products made from serviced and reconditioned components. And they're committed to providing spares for products dating back to 2015. I think this is a big move, like a big I, trend we're going to see. More exactly. Of. I think some of the people I spoke to at Seattle were kind of, we're talking about either heritage or this. People are tending to vote with their pounds mm. and dollars, going for things that are, are more eco-friendly. I think, you know, it's great. If this could be a bit yeah. of a trend for the whole industry. Well, it might save them some money as well, but also we want products that last longer. And yeah, yeah I totally. think it's win-win. Um, so Bluegrass have released a shed ton of knee pads. I'll just go through a couple of them because there's quite a few. So you've got the Aura Core Knee, uh, which has a ceramic printed fabric um, and it's supposed to be impact dispersing at a a recommended price of £130 and then you step down to the Arto knee uh, which is basically a shortened size for better breathability but also they say it's better to be worn with pants or trousers at £90 and then there's the Aura knee which is like the Aura core but without the uh, added ceramic printed fabric um, and also there's the three straps knee uh, as if you didn't have enough knees in this range um, it's basically straps that wrap around your knees three times so you can take them off uh, halfway round a ride if you want to rather than taking your shoes off and faffing with that and that is £110. All the options. How do you demo <laughs> knee pads to know which ones are right for you? So. Oof, yeah, they could do with that, couldn't they? And if you're in the market for some new tools, and who isn't? You're watching GMBN Tech, <laughs> I love buying tools. Then uh, Enduro have created their very own bearing press. It includes two length press rods, sized specifically for hub or suspension applications, and loads of bearing guides and receiver cups for $299. Um, although that is the going rate for a bearing press, yeah. unless you buy something off Amazon. Screwdriver and armor. <laughs> it's a classic. It is a classic. Um, question for you: Are e-bikes gonna go acoustic? Is the trend? Wow. 
from acoustic to e-bike coming back. <laughs> we've, uh, we've seen Martin Mays race the Daniel World Cup that we all got very excited. I, I, mean, I obviously got excited about it because I built, I didn't build a bike, but I took mm. the battery out of my bike and rode it and it was pretty good. Well, check this out on Instagram. I've just seen a guy who has actually 3D printed a part that you can fit inside his Scott e-bike yes. to make it into an acoustic. It's Finn. Uh, friend, right. of channel, friend of mine as well, actually, full factory <laughs> suspension just down the road. He had this idea, he says, uh, a few years ago, so Martin Mays, well, we don't know what he's running, but he's running something to put a, his normal regular mm. bottom bracket in his e-bike. With my video I did, I just took the, mo uh, the battery out and ran it, pedal through the motor, which wasn't that bad, but some motors offer more resistance than others. So if you can forego that and build yourself something, well, Finn tried. Uh, he 3D printed it, it came to a bit of a dead end. He needs someone with a machining capability mm. to come in and build one of these. I don't suppose it'd be that cheap to actually do this, to tool it and make it. No, I know. But if you've got a machine shop and you're interested, get hold of him. Five yeah. Dev, are you watching? Is this a new arm for you guys? They could do Who knows? Right, last week's question was, who are the founders of WTB, Wilderness Trail Bike? It's been around forever, hasn't it? Mm. Uh, it was. Charlie Cunningham, Steve Potts, and Mark Slate. Did not know that. I didn't know that, because Charlie Cunningham's the yeah. guy who built that aluminium bike. Yeah. Um, like, one of the very first. Yeah. Like, popularised alley bikes, basically. Um, all of the winners on the screen, Tim Sadler, I mean, you're holding the record right now. I don't think you've yeah. got one wrong yet. Um, but my next question for you, do you know this, um, is where do Hunt wheels get their name from? It's not as easy as you think on this one. Okay, well, I've got a top mod for you here, Neil, where uh, Al Co. Samwell, maybe, um, basically has this secondhand Focus Whistler from 2016. Um, and while his main bike was having a big service, he used this as a just a second bike. Yep. Um, he said it wasn't great, but he'd always wanted to learn how to like upgrade stuff on his bike, and he had a bunch of stuff lying around, so he decided to upgrade this. Um, and cool, what I really it? liked about it is, I mean, kudos for you for actually you know going ahead and trying some upgrades but i think it's a great idea to have a kind of almost sacrificial bike that you can yeah. practice on so if you've never done maintenance before you've never built a bike up from scratch and you're scared of touching your existing bike i think it's a really good idea to get yourself something really cheap and try and you know take it apart yeah, put it um, back together maybe upgrade it take some time off the the train yeah. Off the train set and the Heinekens <laughs> that are in the back and learn how to fix it. I'm sure that helped. <laughs> Maybe. I made my first mistake with buying a spoke key and thinking, oh, I can do this and yeah. then ruining some wheels. Oh, really? But, yeah, you learn that. Well, I learned the hard way, definitely. <laughs> it's not as easy as you think, is it? Get involved. I loved learning about bikes once I did start doing it, to be fair. Yeah. yeah. It's great. Um, yeah, great top mods. So if you've got a top mod, maybe you've got a bike that you've upgraded, or if you've got an old something, an old bit of tat for the rewind, send it in, or even a bike cave. We haven't had one of those for a while, and we do like to snoop around people's garages, don't we? So send it in, the upload link is down below. Right, into the comments this week, actually off the too much choice uh, chat. Alan75 says, as long as they keep making 27.5 on aluminium, I don't care. Well, <laughs> will they, though? Who knows? The moment, mm. the moment you can only get carbon and 29 is, is the time I find a new hobby. I absolutely hate them. Oh, wow. I mean... I can see the... You know, aluminium will be around forever, but will yeah. 27.5 be around forever? I mean, it won't because it's got like a five-year fatigue life, but I'll get what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> so, uh, Laurentius uh, Trier... I'm not even going to announce that. Uh, if it means better deals for the customer, then yeah, sure. Choices is a good thing. Uh, yeah. H Frizzler says less overlap, more sizes for particular small stroke tall people. Yeah, I'm in that camp. Yeah, more yeah. sizing would be great. Less choice on models, but more sizing, he's saying. A lot of bikes now have quite a, you know, a, a shorter standover. Mm. You just choose on the length and the reach, yeah. which is good. Thing, thing for most people, I think, to have a choice of. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Dead Can Disco. Dead Can Disco. Uh, I wish more companies would give you the option to purchase just the frame. A couple of people have said this yeah, in the specs. Totally. We're getting less and less of this, aren't we? Like being able to build up your own dream bike. And oh. I, I can't believe they've stopped doing this. It's so the much. dream. Yeah, I used to love that. Particularly when I was a racer, I'd get everything sent separately, so I'd get my frame from somewhere. And it was one of my favourite jobs was to spend my day 
day. Well, this is the day you start here. Well, I build my bike with all the parts from all over the you know all over yeah. the world, basically different manufacturers. Yeah, it's a shame it. people don't get a chance to do it. You know, a lot of people who would go into the bike shop and spec it, and that was I a know. really cool part of doing it. Another benefit to having a bike shop, I yeah, guess. Yeah, true. Uh, Phil Dias, uh, PJD, says, Anna and Owen get on so well. I'm afraid you haven't got Owen this week. <laughs> <So anyway. laughs> uh, being truly custom, it's so cool. But what I noticed that looking into companies, it does feel that the overwhelming too many models, like that being too much choice on individual components. Yeah, component choice. Oh, yeah. I have actually noticed that is, you know, there's not much choice in components. Some are only offering two spec options maybe three if you're lucky. And yeah. that, for me, is more important than the choice of models, I think. Yeah, that's true. Or Bayer are good at that with Mayo, where you can choose not only the colors, but also the length, the stem, the upgrade mm, to the different fork, whatever it is. You know, That's a really nice way of doing it online, I think. Mm. And Canyon Sean finally here says, I think there's too many companies making substandard stuff, uh, just copies of other companies' stuff. Yeah, I guess this is the overwhelming part of the choice, isn't it? Is when every company is offering an XE bike, for example, what's differentiating them? I think that is definitely going to wash through the system now. If people, all sizes and types of companies are struggling to exist then the ones who aren't offering good stuff are probably aren't going to. No exactly and coming up this week uh, we're doing a video on Saturday which shows you five things you may have done to set your bike up wrong common mistakes. And I hear you've been out with Blake doing some blind testing on yeah. handlebars alloy and carbon. Yeah we blindfolded him. Well, did he? No, you we, rode did long it. <laughs> we blindfolded him for a bit but it didn't work so uh, we just covered up the handlebars instead um, but will he guess that he's riding carbon Carbon or Ali, is there actually a difference? I guess you'll have to tune in on Sunday to find out. But for now, thank you for watching. See ya.